an obscure online video game. What is it? Oh. Some might consider it an anomaly. A game so far out of ordinary conventions that they're left ripe for urban legends, conspiracies, and rumors. That game looks cool. What makes an obscure video game? How does it differ <gasps> from your Silent Hill or your Call of Duty? Yo! What? Who recognizes this game? About once every five or so years, I have like some kind of flashback to playing this in elementary school. This was a uh, Christian Doom game. I don't remember what it was called now. What, what? No, it's, a, it's Christian Doom, and I can't remember the name, but they had this on like the computer lab when I was in like mid elementary middle school. I used to play it a lot. It was one of the first Christian first person shooter games. Thanks, guy. Since the dawn of gaming, the medium of the home video game has had its fair share of outliers. Throughout your day to day, you might not see it, but it seems that almost every few years, a game breaks the fourth wall and melts with the realm of obscurity. The thing is, some of these are wrapped up in real world mystery and seem to break the overarching meta that accompanies gaming entirely. You see, video games are meant to be an escape Ooh, from Thank reality, you, Tempest, for the 10 gift subs and the recent freedom. Opposite the monotony of our day to day lives. Thank you, Sub Noah. It's when we get the thank outliers you, like Sad Satan that lend people to real life prison sentences or video games tied to cults what? like Kanye Quest that are still mostly unsolved when we obtain this special blend of two vastly differing mediums that are real life. The Deep Web and Sad Satan. June 15, 2015, deep web, deep web horror game built by Terror Engine premiered on YouTube gaming channel Obscure Horror Corner. Infamous game whose origin remains a mystery until today is called Sad Satan. Greeting players upon launching the title screen with the words game title written at the top while a revised version of the Chinese children's songs I Love Beijing Tiananmen plays in the background. Why did they go to jail? Oh, Sad much. Satan had CP in it. Gotcha. In a damn good mystery. Okay. A gaming mystery, if you will. Oh, I'm not a tissue. Mysteries in online video games. <laughs> and they appear to be chatting with someone called the dinosaur. That tips window on the left side, which begins to state some pretty abrasive vernacular. I'm excited. What kind of reasons? On the 4th of September, 2018, at around 7.50 in the morning, Martin an anonymous who graced the export of 4chan, inquiring about Schnell online. Their post about it reads the following. Hi X. I was recently on one of those conspiracy iceberg threads and I came across a user mentioning a game based on the dark web called Schnell online. This game is supposedly used by on the dark net. The user provided a screenshot of the game and this game has no other appearances online. The screenshot provides a clear net link. Proceeding to this link will take you to a basic web page with a download link for a game called Carcass. Okay. Carcass, huh? A bit forward for an obscure game, but my interest is piqued. Heading to the link in the reference screenshot okay. brings us to the profile of an- Nobody calls me a loser, I'll download this shit right now. Interesting, considering that the Schnell player's name was Ulven. If we take a look around, we can notice that the carcass page is strangely devoid of any details or graphics. Like, for instance, in these tags. 2D. Black. Kill. <laughs> murder. What the fuck? Invoid. Oh my god. It actually looks quite a bit like If we head Chanel. back to 4chan, we can observe that another user mentioned a Reddit thread that was posted in 2016. It references an obscurity chart that supposedly has some unfindable games. And in that list, we can see six of them, with just two that have seemingly never been found. Classic Game and Schnell Online. Interestingly, a Redditor named Tyler Dirt had commented on this thread linking to two gameplay videos that were from this list. That of a 14 question one, Jake. and twice fold ampersands. Resubscribe. So it just seems like they made a shitty game. Wow, I take it back. Look at that. Can you speed run this? Oh, wow. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no idea what the hell's even going on here. That looks boring. 
Curiously, these videos were both uploaded by a YouTuber named Saint, and after checking his other videos out, they appear to have a knack for playing old, obscure point-and-click video games. And that's what most of their video library There's consists a prime of. Gunner. Games that are bizarre, eerie, and surreal. Heading Maybe to their YouTube fire. About section reveals their social links, and clicking on their Twitter profile reveals, lo and behold, the real identity of Saint. Olvin W. So what does this tell us? Well, not much, besides the possibility that they most likely created these games. Considering their itch.io page, Very talented it's developer. safe to assume that they're an indie developer and have quite the catalog. Curiously too, if we take his full name and paste it into a Google search, we're able to find a 2016 upload <clears> of that same <throat> Schnell gameplay, unlisted on the same channel. Their description claims that it was slated to release early 2017. However, as that date came and went, Saint had been radio silent about it. It appeared that they moved on from it entirely, continuing their upload schedule as if the concept of Schnell had never existed. What was the... Like what, existed. what was the idea of it? Now, Schnell's been on my radar for the better part of a year or two. Whoa, the why? the rumors about it, the game's highly intriguing by itself. It looks creepy as hell, and I really wanted to get to the bottom of this to find out if it actually exists. With that being said, I decided to track down and contact Saint to see if he had any input. I wasn't expecting a response, but it was worth a shot. My questions to him were as follows. 1. Was Schnell ever released? And if so, is it still up? And 2. It seems that Twicefold Ampersands is enveloped in vagueness. Is this somehow connected to Schnell? And surprisingly, about an hour later... I'm sure the guy would love to be interviewed response. about it. Schnell Online was conceptualized in 2014 following a conversation with an individual who I shall refrain from naming. I'll name them. It we was Dinosaur, right? We call it Lemuria. It was depopulated on January 30th of 2017. Not much is known about the community, even to myself. I was never in contact with much of the regulars, and most of them left without saying anything. If you want to know more, you would have to talk to Q. They were often seen on Traveler, another 3D chat program. Schnell was a homage to those, but they left Traveler sometime in 2015. Here's a prime girly. I'm not sure what they're doing now. Here's some old footage of the in development. It changed a lot afterwards, but I'm hesitant to show any footage of it now. Especially since I'd have to put the servers back up and everything. Interesting. So what is the mystery? It's just a guy makes shit games? Like we already know who makes it and they're shitty. Now what? that my optimism's gotten the better of me because if I'm being completely honest it seems that this game is offline oh and after scouring the internet Dang. about it oh it's man it's been down for a while that's not to say that this Q person isn't real though because curiously I found mentions of them dating all the way back to 2014 in December of that year a redditor named Boxcar Jakey managed to find Q by complete accident. They were reportedly the only other player on Traveler back then, and Jakey found it strange that they were just lurking there, alone. It seemed almost like that Vine Sauce Active World's creepy pasta that happened a few years ago. I don't know but that. What, this one was real. what the fuck is that? This video documents their interaction, and in the description, Jakey provides a bit more context. I was on Digital Space Traveler exploring when a person by the name of Q greeted me with his or her microphone saying automated static numbers. I managed to get some info out of this person, but it seems like this person would never tell me why or what they're doing on a game where no one goes on anymore. 
Following this is a transcript of their conversation, in which they discuss the Traveler game itself, along with other MMOs like Active Worlds and Worlds.com. So, there honestly wasn't just much to it. Fucking lonely but guy, I guess. At the end of the day, this does drive home the point that this Q person that seems referencing is a real person and is still somewhere out there in this vast abyss we call the internet. To find him, though, <laughs> that's a whole different story. Why do Very we want to? Conveniently, what? every what is... lead, every Tumblr page, YouTube video, but or channel why? that he was involved with is now dead. And scouring internet archives in hopes of finding any sort of trace as to where they went is nothing short of hopeless. Thanks, you said breast milk. Knows, though? Perhaps they might see this and come forth with more information. That, of course, would be a long shot in the best case scenario. But considering our other dead ends, that's a chance I'm willing to bank on. What do we want to talk to him about? In conclusion, Schnell Online has proven to enthrall a small part of the internet, and unless the elusive Q ever comes forth with more context, it appears that this eerie game will remain exactly where it's always been. An unfinished concept with obscure nostalgic visuals, all topped off with creepy rumors that'll forever cement its place as one of the more intriguing internet urban legends that I have ever encountered. But what 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 am I what am what am I missing? What why what was so interesting about it? 4chan made a post saying terrorists use it, and then you talk to the guy who made it and said, yeah, some dude named Q plays it. It's just a shitty game from a guy who makes weird shitty games. 4chan made up a creepypasta about it's the exact same thing with the uh, cult in a dead MMO or whatever, where it's just a group of people that still just play an MMO and they have a weird avatar. I guess the mystery is being able to find Q, but it's just a guy who doesn't have any social media. Let's see what the next one is. The game is a sequel, so it picks up on a story that we aren't exactly acquainted with. To summarize though, the series has to do with, well, hauntings that caused the game's characters' lives to change for the worse. Named the Yumizu Occult Research Institute. This is definitely an RPG Allegedly, maker game, huh? The researchers that worked here had disappeared, but at the time we begin the game, our main character doesn't know that. However, instead of being greeted by the staff of this facility, she encounters a bleak emptiness that sends her life spiraling into a void of despair. Thanks, Reese and Turtle. What happened to everyone? And where did they the go? Prime Phoenix. Well, that's for us to find out. And so Kiritani sets off to find the truth. Kiritani makes her way back home, and things seem pretty ordinary. Until you realize that she brought a fucking demon back home with her. No! From there, shit begins to hit the fan with her mom becoming possessed, and from what I understood when playing it, even her friends that came into contact with her. No! It's definitely an interesting game with a solid premise. What? And the visuals that occurred during these haunting sequences even got me pretty good a few times. What? What are you... Uh oh. Allegedly, later in this game, there's a certain glitch that occurs, causing the game to experience a complete failure. <gasps> Apparently, you have to go through a certain gate in a certain area to trigger it. However, it seems to have absolutely no purpose other than posing as a nuisance. The reason I say that mellow. is because when this glitch happens, you're forced to completely close and reopen the game to keep playing. What an inconvenience. What in tarnation? Is there a jump scare coming? <gasps> Ooga -booga! Oh my god. Maybe the prime cipher. Whoa! I will say that there are tons of Let's Plays out there about Yuta Ona Tatari 2, and most of them seem to run into this exact same error. I wanted to see this for myself though, and yeah. It goes without saying that this picture resembles a dead body, and considering how obscure this game is, it left many wondering if this image were real. The only thing that comes remotely close is the game's use of obscure real-world imagery to increase the creep factor. Like this shot of the closet, and this creepy-ass demon lady in Kiritani's dream. This one though, this random, corpse-looking image is the only one of its kind, and starkly stands out among the others due to its bizarre revelation. So what is... 
Is the mystery... Why is that there? It's just a shit horror game. As the what do you mean? Plays began to pile up on YouTube, what? So too did online discussion about this game. One of the earliest instances that gained a bit of traction came from a redditor named You're Not Real on the r slash creepy gaming subreddit. Attached is an imager link, and upon heading there, we're able to gain a bit more insight with their experience. I can't seem to progress any further in the game due to this message. Almost seems like an error report. Oh my god. Screen goes black and flashes a white screen four times. This image appears. Jarring noise plays nonstop. The game stays like this until I click quit. I don't think this is how the game's supposed to end. It is! It fucking is! I can promise you! The comment section, understandably. Oh, it's just a shitty horror game, man. Now, considering the other games we've covered, like Hong Kong 97, it's apparent that real corpses baked within video games are not exactly out of the realm of possibility. Considering the fact that, in Yuta Ono Tatari, you're allegedly supposed to walk through each of these torii in order to trigger it, which I personally think is a relatively specific set of actions. What that do you mean I take the fun out of everything? It's not a mystery! It's such a shitty horror game! I agree with the general sentiment that this image is... eerie. And considering that Giratani's mother does become there's possessed, not like a mystery to it. It's I just, just hope that that is just a bad horror game. And what's to come by utilizing a real corpse. So let's back up. If we're gonna get any answers about the context of this image, we need to figure out what exactly is happening during this glitch. It's not a glitch. Uh, it's it's not a glitch. Oh my god! Has no one played Doki Doki Literature Club? It's just it is, that's that's how we ended it. It's not a glitch. God damn it! And in response, a redditor named It's Rain Time was able to give a translation, reading, Please confirm, location, date, Utah on no Tatari 2, severing the arm, the data is being damaged, possibility is, <sighs> ah, please stop. You get the idea. Now, with this newfound context, it makes it seem that this is much less of a glitch and more of a hidden easter egg of some sort. Given that this is a horror game that uses realistic imagery elsewhere in this story, I wouldn't be surprised if the developer threw in this fake glitch to freak the player out. But pretty even normal with this presumption under our belt, that still doesn't answer our questions about the photo. My opinion hasn't exactly changed on it, and reverse searching that image brings up a whole bunch of nothing. Who knows? Perhaps Pia dug this up and threw it in the game, not expecting anyone to find it. Maybe they were going to take it out of the game, but just left it. No matter what the reason or motive behind why it's in there though, the image that occurs during this glitch is haunting. And I really, really hope that it isn't what I think it is. It isn't. I'll tell you right now, it isn't. I'll, I'll be the one to hit you with the good news. It's not. It's a bad horror game. There's. I've played a million of those fucking games on Steam. That's not even a unique one. It's just, it's just a shit horror game. It's not a mystery! Fuck! You mean like an actual, like, story that it's, it's you know, it's like an anything? Fuck! optimistic about this one. There's a prime chip. Welcome to the Museum of Anything Goes. A 1995 MS-DOS game created by Maybe Michael Markowski and Maxwell Robertson. The game oh, wow. is the epitome of the creepy, surreal 90s edutainment game in the same vein of Super Solvers and Roly Poly's No Nana Karobi Yoki. A I classic, who could forget? In the Drown God video, and you all seem to take great interest in it, so I found it fitting to talk about. Not only because of that, but because it became somewhat of an urban legend itself just a few years ago. The premise of the game is simple, but at the same time, incredibly complex. 
by calling itself the Museum of Anything Goes. That notion Anything is can go. as we experience uncanniness and unexplainable peculiarity around every corner. This game looks lit. The basic premise involves the idea that you're dropped off in front of a strange museum <clears throat> and you're given no context or storyline as to why. The back of the game box is incredibly vague too, stating that you're at a museum unlike any you've ever seen. There are no guards, no rules, no Where limits. is the penis man? Become uh, a part of the imagery I haven't and played experience it. the thrill of this unbelievable interactive museum. To be honest, I don't exactly think there's any sort of end goal with the Museum of Anything Goes. It seems to be one of the earlier choose-your-own-adventure games that were made, and because of that, it's got a pretty substantial replay value. You can quite literally just explore to your heart's content. All right, finally! And interacting with whatever piques your interest. Freedom. Whoa! Four. Three. Two. Pop goes the weasel. Hey, that's not a weasel, that's a... Wait, I'm an agent. This game looks amazing. You know, there's something special about this game. I feel like J it's all unintentional. Everything is rigid, out of place, and painstakingly dead. Sure, there are people in these rooms but I have strangely never felt more alone. I can't really explain it, and I think that's what makes this game so unintentionally haunting. It's a product of the 90s, and in damn sure shows. But while I could talk about this game all day, we're actually here for something specific. All right, what? An eerie little mystery that was birthed from someone that you just might have heard of. T-Pain. Did he make the game? The Museum of Anything Goes. Oh, Vinny! And this is some hot garbage for you. Here on this Sunday. On this Sunday stream. You're gonna love it. I'm running it in a virtual... Um, OS. So, for the your future pleasure. future is now. For your pleasure. For your pleasure! This is Vinny Vinesauce a video game streamer that's been active for the better part of the past decade. Back in 2016, he created a mini-series where he played through various 1990s entertainment games. Yes, and they he did. All gathered a pretty substantial amount of views. The Museum of Anything Goes episode, though, stood out among the others, not just because of the game itself, but because within it, he encountered something disturbing. Deprived me of my emotions. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't click the grave. You'll be sorry. What, don't do it, Vinny! Oh my god, that's a dead body! Get me out! The fuck is this shit? Wow. Anything goes in the museum, Vinny. On this street, Didn't you read the back of the box? The, of viewers, the game presented what he thought to be a dead body. That belief to him was so strong that his stream archive from that night is still censored to this very day. What it actually was, was a bunch of... what? What did they substitute? Because he's making it sound like the mystery is that it wasn't a dead body. So what was it? So what happened a skinwalker? There? Within the Museum of Anything Goes, there's a section where you can interact with this specific painting that looks like it's meant to represent a portal to heaven. The game asks you to click a Phantom button and Forbes. you want to see someone fall out of the sky. And if you do, you observe the following. No! <laughs> the game then guilts you. Well then. Now look what you've done. You must now attend his funeral. What the fuck? But first, you must dig a grave. And the scenes that follow involve us doing exactly that. Interestingly, when this casket's in the ground, hey, the game dragon. warns us. Whatever you do, don't click on the grave. Should babble. You'll be sorry. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, 
it seems to be setting up the idea that within this coffin is a human being, the one we had fall out of the sky. With this notion in mind, I don't fault anyone for believing that the next scene is indeed a dead body. But it's not, what is it? What the fuck am- what- what is happening? Is this like a toss wrist or something? What is this, like a clip from a movie or something? So this is what came up on Vinny's stream? Oh, it's a pig. Oh, I see. Oh, I skimmed ahead. I see. The game seemed to do okay. everything it possibly could to set though. up the premise that what you're seeing is a human corpse. However, if you take a step back and really look at it, you'll realize that it's nothing more but an early age jump scare. Do I think it's in bad taste? Yeah, a little bit. And this game toys with the idea of death in other areas too. That is pretty weird. Ah! Emotep! The tier all one in all, Korean. This game is still incredibly eerie. Blending fiction with reality implementing incredibly rigid animation and voiceovers, and having this strange ambience throughout your entire adventure effectively solidifies this experience as one that'll stick with you. The lingering sentiment you get when playing this is uneasiness, and pressing through the abstract nonsense that's thrown at you around every corner really makes this game stay true to its name. This museum is haunting, it's uncanny, and it's a place where, as we've seen, Anything goes. Anything goes. Yep. Not so what was the mystery? Just whether or not that was a dead body in the coffin? Yeah, it's a weird game, but it wasn't really a mystery. Is it about like the people that made it who made that game? And it was like Anthony I forgot. Anthony something. Wayzada Technology. Wayzada Public Schools. I don't feel like looking too deep into it. Mysteries and online video. Like you said Birdsy. A newfound fascination of mine in what seems like a fitting progression of the console conspiracy series. Tonight, we just dove into three gaming mysteries that have recently intrigued me. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you have any other obscure video, third one was definitely the best the ones one we discussed tonight. Feel free to shoot me an email at nightmareexpo at gmail.com. I just think so. The third one I th was probably the best one. But these first two, there isn't like a mystery to be solved. It's mainly a showcase of a weird game with a... All, well, this one at least had a story. This didn't have anything. It just seems like there's no drive. So, example, this one. The mystery was the glitch. When that was just part of the game. Like, that was the core scare. Or you get like a creepy image when you do this. It's like a really common technique for shitty horror games. This one was a giant block of fucking nothing it's just a bad horror game that i think three people on reddit were just trying to figure out it's not exactly a mystery this one i guess if the 4chan stuff led to anything with q and whatever could have been an interesting story but there wasn't anything there this one was just interesting overall the museum of anything goes this is just this whole second one was trash though just a bad horror game Make sure to smash that like button and thumbs up, ring the bell, tell your mom I said hi.